Hey everybody, Kathy here with Paint Pouring by Kathleen Miller. I've been getting some comments that people want to know my mixing recipes for different um, paintings that I do in my creations. So I thought, okay, as long as I have a little bit of free time today, I'm going to show you exactly what I use and what I do with my painting. So I have this set out for my glue and water recipe. This is set out for my Floetrol paint and water recipe. Here's my handy dandy little scale. So let's get started. I already have my glue poured out and my water just to save a little bit of time, but you always want to use the Elmer's glue all. You don't want to use the school glue. You want to use this one. And distilled water. Correct. correct. Distilled water. So what I do is I have turned on my scale. I have it on my MLs. Put that on. When it got to put it back to zero. Now this is going to be your 70-30? Correct. Okay. Glue recipe. Okay. My pouring medium for my paints, which is the 70-30. So I'm going to go 70 with my glue first. And this goes pretty fast, so you don't have to be exact, exact, but try to be the closest that you are because otherwise it won't mix right. Ah. Come on. Okay, we did 71, that's okay. <laughs> It's a little bit over, but it's fine. Okay, so now then you reset your scale. You reset to it zero. to zero. Now I'm going to pour in my 30 of my water. And like I said, it goes pretty fast. Thirty point three. That's just fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this up because this is your pouring medium. Right. Now when I do this for Kathy, um, she likes to make big quantities, so I double and triple it. Instead of 70, 30, you know, I'll use 140 or 60 or 210 and 90. And it's, that's the same ratio, it's just uh, you can make bigger batches quicker that way. Yeah, it's a lot easier, a lot easier. Okay, so this is my pouring medium now. So now, and you can see it's really, really runny. That's what you want. Because this, um, you can either make it thinner with your paints or you can make it thicker. And I'm gonna show you what I do next. So I take a cup like this. I okay, so now you got Your pouring medium now you're going to mix it with your paint correct okay so what I'm gonna do is I usually start out with probably 40 and you use your scale MLs. for this too. yes okay 40 mls I mean you can even go fit I will go 50 doesn't really matter because you'll get it to your right consistency that you want And I'll show you the consistency that I like. Woo, one more drop, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, was it exact? See, I usually don't, I can just eyeball it now. So this is so fun because I don't really measure exact. Okay, now I have 50.2 of my pouring mixture, which is my glue and my water. Now I have my paint, which is, you can use any of your paints, it doesn't matter. I, I'm just picking one color that I don't have made up. I'm going to go, that's 50, I'm gonna start out probably with 35 because this is a thicker paint. Yeah, because 
different paints of different thicknesses and so forth, you, you can't always use the exact same formula no. every time. This is sort of a guideline. And, and I think you make your final decision after you add the paint and stir it. I do. Um, on the consistency that you, okay. you now, feel is, is We're going to stir this. And I'll show you if it's a little bit too thick or if it's a little bit too thin, what you can do. But now I go by the consistency that I like. You might um, want yours a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. That's totally up to you, but this is how I like my paints. Now, if you do a swipe, you want your paints a little bit thicker than thinner. Not much, but that's another thing. You, I just eyeball mine, so I can't give you the exact amount that I do. Well, this is your starting point. It is. And then uh, you, I just you go, from, go there. from there. And, and uh, Sometimes, actually, uh, w once you put the paint on the canvas, you you realize that it was either too thick or, or too, too thin, thin sometimes. I mean, it's, it's not an exact science. And... and now with the 70 and the 30, I always uh, use a cell activator. And that I either put in one, two, or three drops. It's totally up to you. If you don't want a lot of cells, don't put in a lot of... So are you, after you show some of these other things, you'll show a little bit on the cell activator then too. Well, you just oh. add it. Oh, I see. Oh, like the silicone, like the Helmers? Correct, the Helmers oh, silicone. See. Oh, Helmers or the uh, Sanja? Yes. No. Okay. Or, you know, the coconut oil. I see. Oh, I see. Any of these. Yeah. You can use the coconut milk, um, the Helmers. You can use the spot on treadmill. Like, I see. So that, okay, that's so, what meant. okay. This is the consistency that I like my paint. It leaves a mound, but it disappears. So that was 50 of the glue and water and 35 of the paint. Now that's the Amsterdam paint. A lot of times your um, golden paints are a little bit thicker. So you might have to thin it with more of your pouring medium of the glue and the water combination. But this is exactly how I like these. So can you see that really yep. good, Phil? Yeah, you can see that. It, you can see how it, it hits the surface stays just for momentarily. And then and disappears. It drips off here just yeah. like right. honey. Okay. So that is the one pouring medium that I do with the paints. Okay, where am I going to put this? Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll just put it right there. And my nose is running. <laughs> my nose has been running all day, people. Ah, oh, it's my allergies. Okay. Now we're going to go to the Floatrol mixture. I cannot stress enough. Have your little strainer and strain your Floetrol because if you don't, you're gonna get little grubbies and little boogers and it's amazing the stuff that you get in it, right Phil? Yeah, it you, is. You wouldn't think, and yeah. make sure you shake it first. Um, I already strained my Floetrol so everyone would know. I always use the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White paint in this. My base, paint that I use on my canvases is the same mixture as I mix with my colored paints. So this is my base paint and I always mix up a bunch of this and put them in here because that way I can just dump it right on my canvases. So I mixture mix my paint, my Floetrol, my paint, and my water. So I'm gonna do that and show you now how okay. I'm gonna do this. So, oh, I see, yeah, this is a... Okay, so now this is the MLs again. I'm taking 80 MLs of Floetrol. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the 80-40-30 mixture you mentioned sometimes. Correct. Okay, so it uh, starts out with 80 uh, mLs, milliliters of Floetrol. Correct. Okay. And it's American Floetrol. Okay. Oh, right on the money almost. 80.1. Okay, we go back to zero. Now we add our 40 mLs of our paint. And once you get the hang of this, it's, it's very, very easy. Even somebody like me can do it. Phil usually <laughs> does a lot of my um, base uh, mixtures and stuff because it, it takes so much time that he has more time to do that than I do because I, I mix all my other stuff. Now I have 30 mLs of my distilled water. Got 32, but that's, no, that's okay. okay. Okay, so now we're gonna mix this up. And this is all that's that's really to it. This is your base for your canvases. Um, if you want to do a different color for your base, just replace the 40 mLs of the white with your choice of colors. Oh, I see. You can oh, have a black base. Um, gold base, so, so any color that you want, that can be your base, but you use the same mixture. So you're, you're replacing this this flow acrylic, is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, I see, which is white, and if you want it colored, you just use the paint. The color. Okay, I, right. I see. Now, what I do with my paint is I either mix them in a cup or I mix them in here. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up another one, but I'll show you this because I can pour this in my cup. Yes. This one is also very runny. You want it runny mm. for your base. This actually looks a little more runny than uh, your other the glue. combination. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so now you've got that those, go with those the two trail. different types of bases, is that what we call them? That's a, ba That's a base. No, it's a pouring medium. Pouring. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Pouring medium. Okay. Correct. But this is your base. With this one, that is not your base. Okay. That's your pouring medium okay. for your uh, I, colors. I don't want to get people mixed up. I'm right. trying to understand this myself. So, so zip Kathy it for will, a minute. Kathy will correct me. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to mix the colors. Okay. You're going to mix them exactly the same way. So we're going to go 80 of our float trawl. Ah. And I like to uh, pour my float trawl into like this cup because even if I don't use all of it, I can dump it right back in. Okay, now I'm going to take my turquoise blue. I'm gonna go 40. So I don't, I don't wanna confuse people, but now this is a colored pouring medium you're making. No. <laughs> so, Phil, okay. no, let me explain this when we're done. Well, now I'm I'd doing like the water. I know what you're making while you're I'm making gonna... it. But okay. Okay, it's the same thing as my base, only it's with my colors. You mix this up, same thing. And you can see, all, Phil can show you all my uh, containers over there, all my colors. It's the same thing as oh, I'm mixing. Okay, oh, that goes in here. Correct. Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, all right. D okay. Now I'm, I'm understanding. I know. You it's have the, to let me actual, explain first. It's the actual paint you use. 
paint Correct. colors that you use out of those bottles. Okay. Correct. And you can do it as your Dutch pour. You can do it. At, you can use that in so many things. It does not work well with a um, swipe because it's too thin. Okay. But if you want to do your Dutch pours and uh, blow them out with your dryer and stuff, this is perfect. So what I usually do after this, I usually put them in here and shake it. Put the lid on and away you go. If you don't have these bottles, you can leave it in your cup and just cover it with um, some cellophane. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, you can also put silicone in this if you want, but the Floetrol will produce cells. You do not need to put any uh, silicone in here if you don't want to. Okay, Phil, question? No. No, not really. Okay. I've been wrong 100% of the time so far, so we'll see what, uh, what you, what's next. Okay. okay, so we're finished with this part of our stuff. Okay, so what you've done is you've made pouring mediums, two types of pouring mediums, right? Yes, I made... And then you made uh, paint for the Correct. bottle. Correct. Okay, all right. Correct. We don't need our water anymore. We don't really need this because I'm trying to get rid of this stuff over here so I can bring up my next batch of stuff and show everyone what we're right. going to do next because okay. the next thing what we're going to do is this is for just your regular pours for pouring medium. This is your regular, regular pours. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up our pouring stuff for our base on our paints for the bloom technique. This is a Sheely Art bloom technique that we're doing next. So I will bring these up and show you what I use. Okay, this, okay. Now I have a whole bunch of things to show everyone here. This can go over here. We don't need this, but I need this to show you. I'm gonna have this. All right, now, what I use on my base for my bloom technique is the Color Art or the Color Place paint from Walmart. I change off. I like the satin and I also like the semi-gloss. It's your choice. If you don't use what I'm telling you that I use, you're not going to get the same thing that I get. If you use what I use and have my consistency, you will get the same result I get. So for my pigments, what I do is I take, and this does not go on the scale, so I'll just put that aside. I use my 15 ml spoon and my teaspoon of 5 mls. What I do is, I'm just going to demonstrate right on this because yeah, it's fine. tall. Yeah, that's fine. Ah! Okay. 
So I'm going to take my choice that I use 99% of the time is 15 mLs of Rust-Oleum and 15 mLs of the Vivid Enamel. And the Vivid Enamel you can only get through Color Art. So, where's my little stick? Okay. So that's right out of the can? Right out of the can. Okay. So that's my 15 mLs of my Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum triple thick polyurethane, okay. Correct. And I just put that into this little hinky cup. Then I take my Vivid Enamel. And I have 15 mLs of that. That cup is a, by the way, the cup is a three and a quarter ounce cup. But you don't, you don't need, uh, you don't need that size cup if you don't want it. You, you can mix this in any, anything. Well, well I know, but, but uh, that's convenient if that's all the paint you're going to be using. It's a nice size. Yeah. Now, some people just put them in the little Dixie paper cups so that they can, um, I don't know, throw them away. But with this, the reason I like to put them in here is because once your pigments are gone, all you have to do is put um, your stick in and leave it uncovered and it'll pull right out. I have I have one over there I'll show you after I mix this. So what I do is I mix this now. Okay, those are the two ingredients, Vivid Enamel and Rust-Oleum. For the pigments. Okay, so you get that mixed up first. Now I'll probably get some feedback because I don't use a respirator to mix my pigments. Um, feel free to use a respirator. They say that you should use a respirator. I do not, but that's just my preference. Okay, now I have this little dinky spoon. What I do is, now this is the new uh, Color Art Bling It, and this is the Extreme Pastel Light. This color is Firefly. And when you see the colors, um, a lot of times they don't look like the container. So it's a good idea maybe to mix it and then dab your finger in it and put it on the top so you know exactly what color it is. I want to be careful because this is brand new. Okay, this is what the pigments look like. I take, I like a lot of color in my pigments. So what I do is, um, I use a about, pretty good hefty amount. Yeah, about three quarters, Yeah. more than three quarters of the spoon, okay. And then what I do is I stand back and I just kind of like get it all covered up and then I start mixing very slowly. Then I go a little bit faster. And those are my colors that I mixed up yesterday. Phil can show you right there on the table. After um, right there. Yeah, that that's actually for um, okay, a so project that I'm going to be doing. So these are the pigments you made up yesterday, correct? correct? Are those the uh, pigments for the wine rack coming up? Are you giving them a hint which one won? No, no. Or. Well, that's a good thing because those are the colors. So I'm sure who's ever watching this has a pretty good idea what color won. <laughs> well. Okay, so as you can see, this is called Firefly. And then look at the color. It's sort of a creamy gold or something? Yeah. Okay. So this is the consistency that you want. Now, do you like to make those up a day ahead of time? I make them up 
a day I mean, ahead of time, a week ahead of time. Okay. But you try to make them up a little bit ahead of time. Correct. For uh, for bubbles and stuff, maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, you can. Okay. It's better if you make them up like the day before. Okay. I don't always have the patience to wait because... So that's all you have to do to make your different colored pigments that you use, correct? For the same, pigments. Same? That's, that's what... That's my consistency and what I use 99% of the time. If you, you, I can give you other options. Like the, another option is you can use the deep base paint, three ounces of the in untinted deep base paint. And I got this at Walmart. And then you can use one part of your polycrylic clear gloss. You can mix that into a cup like this. Put the same amount of pigment that I showed you on my spoon, mm -hmm. mix it up, and that is your pigment mixture. Now, if you want to use the same pouring medium that I just used of my Vivid Enamel and my Rust-Oleum, all you have to do is, I don't know if I have enough of this out, but I'll show them with the paint. Okay, we're gonna use the 15 mLs again of the Rust-Oleum. Wait, I gotta get a different one. I don't wanna mix that. So, this is um, going to be for the paint mixture. That. Oh, that the other was one for, I just did was, the was for the pigment. Okay, now I understand. But I can use the same pouring medium for paints. And you can mix your pigments and you can mix your paints with the Sheely Art. I might not have enough vivid enamel in Well, it's a demonstration, so just... I know I gotta get this, because oh, I don't I have enough. Okay. Ugh. Sometimes this cap gets stuck, too. Okay. So, now we're just gonna get 15 mLs of this. Remember, we have the 15 mLs of the Rust-Oleum. Now we're going to have the 15 mLs of the Vivid Enamel. We're going to mix these two together. And you don't want to get mixed up with um, the pigments, the, the bloom technique with the regular because the mLs are the spoons, not the scale. Or you'll have so much going on, you're gonna go, oh, that didn't work. Okay, so that is that. 15 and 15 for your paints. So then you put the paint in, right? Well, no, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir this first. See, I, I usually don't stir this because I put the paint in and I mix it all. So mm -hmm. now I have to be exact because this is how you're really supposed to do it. Yeah, don't cut any corners here on us. Can't cut any corners. Okay, now I'm going to take my um, paint and I'm going to, what color do I have here? Oh, I don't. It well, doesn't matter. No, I don't want to do that color. Uh, we'll do this color because this is usually what I do with these paints. So I'm going to take like a little pea size, one and two of those. If you want to add any type of an iridescent, you can get this at Michael's. It's Artist Loft and it's... Um, the iridescent, just yeah. okay, clear. Iridescent medium. Okay, so 
You put the two little piece sizes of paint. Now, if you want to add iridescent medium, how much just is that? Just a pea size. Or just one more pea size? Or you can just do one of the paint and one of the uh, pea size okay. iridescent. Okay. Okay, so now you can see. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is. That's the. This is our pigment. That's the pigment, okay. Okay, see how it just. Mm hmm. That's the consistency that you want. It disappears. Okay. That's your pigment. Now you're going to see a difference in your paint. See how thick oh, it is? Yeah. It is definitely thicker, yes. Yes, it's a lot thicker. So what you do, you take your Josana varnish. Use the same pouring medium as your pigments, only to thin your paint, put some Josana varnish in it. Couple drops? A mm, couple drops okay. to your consistency All that right. you want. I see. So th that's okay. the only difference. Yeah, I was always wondering why you added that to the paint. But that's it's to uh, thin it. To thin it. Okay. All right. And you know you can you can keep adding more and more. That's why you only add a little bit at a time. But you can see already that it's starting yes. to disappear. Yeah, it's starting to look more like the consistency of the pigments. Okay. Okay. That is my pigments and my paint, paint demonstration. Next, we're going to do our cell activator and what that is I gotta wipe this out because this is a whole different thing again with this you use your um I have so many recipes, it's not even funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, for my cell activator, I use one ounce of the American Floetrol. So I'm gonna put that on a scale so everybody can see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll get my scale here. Ugh. Turn it on. Go all the way to my ounces. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, you're working on uh, the cell this activator. This is my cell activator. Okay. And you're putting, um, what are you putting in there now? This is my American Floetrol. Okay. And how much? One ounce. One ounce of American Floetrol. Okay. Okay, now I take my teaspoon and I do one teaspoon and I use the oxide uh, black, you can use the carbon black by um, Golden, you can use the lamp black by Amsterdam, You're, any of your choice and you can mix this color so this into this as well if you want to do a different color activator. Right. So this is your black cell activator that you're doing at the moment. Correct, with the American Floetrol. Okay. All right. Okay. And this is something it seems like uh, I could be wrong on this, but the fresher you make it, or you, you know, if you use it sooner rather than later, it seems to work better. Yeah, I usually make mine up only a couple days ahead. At the at the most, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is your cell activator. Everybody asks me, oh, what's that special black that you use? This is what we do. And this is for your bloom. And you, the, you have to stir and stir and stir this and make sure you get your sides. 
but stir, 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 stir. Um, I hope I explained this pretty well. well. One more question I have now. If it was a white cell activator, you simply use white, the Amsterdam, titanium white. Amsterdam titanium white. Okay. Correct. If All you right. want a gold, you use a gold color. Okay. If you want burgundy, you yeah. use some burgundy. Yeah, I think you've, uh, I, I know I've learned some things uh, while you've done this, even though I've watched you hundreds of times doing this stuff. I've never really watched you make a lot of this stuff prepare a lot of this stuff so this is why i'm up in my room for exactly. hours okay exactly. and i'm going to show everybody this uh now watch oh, it's a little, if it's, huh? it, oh, if it's like elastic oh, it's, it's it's hard to see because you have black on oh here yeah yeah put it to the side but see i have to keep mixing this because there, i know Oh yeah, Boop. okay, I see. If you have an elastic oh, like snap consistency, back, snap back. yes, you have the right consistency. If it doesn't snap back to your liking, keep stirring because you have to stir this really, really well. So and like with, I said, you can use, you know, the white titanium white as well. So with these formulas or, or recipes, I guess you'd call them, um, People can do pretty much go. anything with the paint pouring uh, using uh, these different recipes. Correct. correct? You can do uh, your 70-30 with your swipes. Um, just get your consistencies, you know, thicker for your swipes, thinner for others that you want to do like a pour or something. The 80-40-30 of the Floetrol, the paint, you can use that for numerous, numerous things. So I hope everybody has enjoyed this video um i've been wanting to do it and i'm i'm glad i did it for everyone now so phil will upload this and um feel free to ask me questions if you didn't get something but it should be all in black and white now so until the next video um please subscribe to our channel we have new things going on all the time and i hope everybody has a wonderful day bye Hey everybody, Kathy here with Paint Pouring by Kathleen Miller. Today, I want to explain to everyone how I do my Color Art Primary Element Pigments. I'm going to tell you exactly the ingredients and the products that I use for my bloom and my drizzle technique creations. First of all, my base is Color Place. I get this at Walmart. It's the interior white with the satin. This goes on your base, which is your canvas, first. Now, the products I use to make my color art primary element pigments are 15 mLs of the Rust-Oleum triple thick polyurethane Rust-Oleum. 15 mLs of the Vivid Enamel, which is from Color Art. You need to get this at Color Art. So, what I do is, I have my one tablespoon, which is 15 mLs. I fill that up. And that's a cup of the Rust-Oleum product, correct? This is not a cup. This is just a tablespoon. Well, I, I meant that's what's in the cup. 
Well, yeah. yeah. What's, what's in that cup was the Rust-Oleum. Correct. In the spoon. It's going into the cup. Very simple recipe. This is going to be the 15 mLs of the Vivid Enamel. Because some people are getting confused about this, so, and I'm going to show you exactly how I mix the Color Art Primary Element pigments. And when see, and when Kathy says some people are confused, that includes me. So <laughs> yeah, it I does. wanted her to do a special video showing how she prepares her Color Art pigment okay. recipe. So, now you have those two in this cup. You stir them up. Rustoleum and Vivid Enamel. Okay. Correct. And any of the Color Art primary elements, the Vivid Enamel, just go to um, their website, which is colorart.com. And I also have a 20% off coupon for your entire purchase. It doesn't matter if you have one purchase or 15 purchases. You get 20% off your entire purchase. And my coupon code is Kathy Miller, all in small letters, 520. Right. All together. I'll have that uh, link in the description of this video. So now, so now I, use a, color. Okay. I use a little bit more pigment than you should because I like mine to be a little bit vivid. So I put it in the cup, close it back up. This is Starburst, which is beautiful. There isn't any color that I don't like. <laughs> They're all beautiful. You just stir this up. Now you should probably put a respirator on or a mask um, to be safe. I do not do that, but that's just, that's just me. But to be safe, you probably should do that. So we just stir this up. And stir, 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 stir. Until it's all together. Keep wiping the sides of your cup. Wipe off your stir. Go back, stir, stir, stir. Gives you this consistency where it dissolves. It just goes away. Now, if you have these pigments made up and they get thick if you don't use them right away just add a little bit of water not much to the consistency that you want so that is all I do for my color art primary element pigments that's all there is to it's it it's huh? never going to change okay every pigment that i make from color art primary elements is this consistency the rustoleum and the vivid enamel and that's for your blooms and drizzles yes okay yes right. and you only use this um, technique and these this recipe for the blooms and the drizzle on your house paint only so I hope everybody understands this a little bit better I including have a quick you question yes um, you try to make your pigments fresh I do what a day just a day or two before I do you use them okay. I do um, very good okay and, and you just don't have to stick to one pigment I I incorporate like maybe five pigments in one cup to get all different ideas so you can mix them up to whatever you like but that's the way my recipe is if you follow my recipe you are going to get what I get so and once again these are color art pigments primary, primary elements correct okay and there will be a link to colorart.com and you can use that 20 percent discount correct okay so until the next time bye